Today, we're going to talk about what to look out for when shopping for a bespoke tailor. Welcome to Ask Oki. I am your host, Prof, also known as the King of Drape. Let's get into it. Let's talk about what kind of options there are available for the bespoke look, so to speak. There are a number of cuts. There are any number of cuts out there. For the purposes of this presentation, we're going to focus on what I consider to be the three main cuts. One would be the, I would call it the slim fit continental European look. The second would be the American sack look. And the third would be the English drape cut. Now, let's start from the top. Let's talk about the continental look. The continental look is worn anywhere on the continent, meaning on the continent, to, uh, on the continent of Europe, France, Italy, and elsewhere, which basically on the continent of Europe and perhaps Germany. France and Italy uh, have a history in tailoring and have acquired, or should I say, secured a distinct name or look for themselves when it comes to uh, tailoring. Uh, names like Cifonelli or, uh, you know, uh, Camps de Luca, or so many French names uh, come to mind. And then if you go to Italy, of course, the choice uh, is just uh, limitless. But the point there is that the European cut or the continental cut is cut closer to the body. And one explanation from my own perspective for this is that European men tend to be slight in build. They tend to be slight, at least historically, they've been slight in build, meaning sort of thin, and, uh, and fairly uh, slightly built. And so that look, uh, tapered trousers and a closer fitting jacket, uh, tends to, uh, let's say, flatter a slimmer or slighter figure. However, uh, that's been a long time. That's a long time ago. And obviously, uh, things have changed. Diet, uh, the way of living or sort of lifestyle has changed. And I cannot say that the current European man uh, is the archetype uh, uh, 50 years ago or 100 years ago when this cut was sort of, uh, let's say, designed for the average European man. So again, the European continental look or the continental look is a closer cut suit, cut closer to the body. The, the jacket is cut closer to the body. The trousers are slimmer. Now let's move on to the American sack look. This is also sort of packed with history, uh, going back uh, even 100 years back uh, or even more. Uh, it is also known as the Ivy look. It's a coat that sits like a sack, just as the name suggests. Uh, it's undarted. Essentially, you use that to create shape or to shape the jacket. So an American sack coat is undarted. It basically drops like that uh, from top to bottom. And it's extremely comfortable and understated. In fact, uh, back then, the European coat was sort of frowned upon by the aristocrats, the American aristocrats, who favored the American sack look for its sort of understated uh, nature. So again, the American sack look, it's a full cut coat. It drops straight down. Uh, no darts are used. The, the coat is not shaped. Uh, if you look at my coat, obviously it's shaped. Uh, the coat is not shaped. Trousers are cut fairly full for the American sack coat, fairly full. And uh, generally, overall, speaking, or sort of generally speaking, an overall roomy and understated cut. Now, this brings us to the third cut, which is our favorite, of course, the English drape cut. Now, for those of you who followed us for some time, you would know that this is our preferred cut. And it's essentially, it's a combination of that European look or that continental look and the American sack look. When I say a combination, I don't mean aesthetically, but it borrows, in my view, the best from both, in the sense that it's a coat that is shaped. Uh, if you look at what I'm wearing, obviously, this is not shaped like a sack. Uh, it is shaped, and at the same time, it is a very roomy coat. So it's very comfortable. The coat is roomy. The trousers are cut fairly full, mirroring, essentially, all the fundamentals of the American sack coat or sack suit. So the English drape cut, which 
more or less was brought into being, the name Drape itself was brought into being by uh, King Edward, or sort of the former, what, well, laterly the Duke of Windsor. Uh, but it became sort of an English look, so to speak. Uh, broad in the shoulders, roomy in the chest, tapered in the waist, overall a nicely shaped coat and fairly full trousers or fuller than what you would see or what you would find on the continent of Europe. Again, it's darted, so darts are used to create the shape just like on the continental coat as well. Now, various tailors have different techniques as far as sort of darting. Some use front darts, some use side darts, but the end result being that darts are used to create shape overall. What to expect when visiting a tailor? Now, this is a lot more anecdotal and subjective, if you will. And whatever I will share with you, obviously, will be based on one man's experience and yours, your mileage, as they would say, may differ. Uh, every tailor I've been to, every tailor will tell you they're the best. So pre be prepared for that. Uh, they will often, often criticize what you're wearing. If you're wearing a suit by another tailor, the first thing they would do would be to take the suit apart, literally speaking, or in a manner of speaking. Um, and it's a psychological trick, essentially, is to tear down your confidence and sort of to build themselves up in your eyes. So if you're a novice to this game, uh, you will fall for this trick over and over again. So again, bear in mind, one, they will tell you the best and they will often criticize what you're wearing. I would completely dismiss both of them and focus on the product that you have right in front of you. Now, which brings me to the third point. You do have to have some working knowledge of the bespoke process. Do not walk in blind. A bespoke garment is an investment. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a throwaway. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a fungible item. It's an investment item and uh, often comes at a cost, at a, at, a, at a dear cost. So you want to do at a minimum some basic research, understand the process, understand the style, what you're looking for, at least have a vague idea of what you want. Uh, that way, uh, you completely eliminate the possibility of being entirely bamboozled uh, by tailors once you walk into their atelier or their shop. Now, coming to the actual steps, uh, the first thing, once you've settled on, on the tailor, you will be measured. Once you've settled on a tailor and a price, you'll be measured. You'll be presented with options for your garments, including fabrics. And these options include, you know, double-breasted, single-breasted, the pockets, and so on and so forth. And, and these options are, they run the gamut. They could go, they could, you know, you could have up to 50 options. Uh, but we're not going to go through all of them. The point being that once you've agreed on a price, and you're measured, you will be presented with options including fabric. And then you would have to make a decision at that point uh, what you wish to move forward with. After that, you will be asked to return to the tailor for a first fitting. Uh, we call this in the trade a basted fit. Uh, we've talked about this in some of our prior YouTube videos. It's essentially it's a skeleton with sort of a piece of canvas in it and a chest piece. And essentially just to sort of ensure that the measurements that were taken are consistent with the garment that is going to be produced. It's basted together, meaning it hasn't been tailored. It's basically sort of put together loosely with threads just to check to ensure that all the measurements are correct and indeed the styling, in fact, is what you desire. Now, let's talk about limitations of bespoke tailors. Now, this is where it gets really kind of tricky. From a technical standpoint, there should be no limitation. In other words, if any tailor is worth his weight in salt or in gold, they should be able to execute a technical garment. And when I say technical garment, I mean things like the engineering aspects of the garment, getting the armhole right, getting the collar right, getting all the fit elements right, any well-trained bespoke tailor worth his salt should be excellent from a technical standpoint. Now, the second part, the limitations, under limitations I'll talk about is design. And this is really where it gets very tricky. Most bespoke tailors, in my view, 
Now, you may differ, and a lot of tailors watching this may differ, but in my own experience, most bespoke tailors are very poor at design. They're good engineers, I like, as I like to say, but very poor architects. They're very good at what they do, which is essentially putting together a garment, but when it comes to having an eye for design, for proportion, that is really not what they're trained to do. And a lot of them, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them uh, are not very good at it. At best, they will give you their house cut, and that's it. A house cut is sort of a style that the house has developed over the years and somehow perhaps has satisfied customers. And so they sort of keep that style. Uh, for instance, Anderson and Shepard or Huntsman, um, there are those connoisseurs uh, who know all the Savio houses who could tell you distinctly one house style from the other. And so it is that for a lot of bespoke houses, they stick with what works. If a particular style works, they stick with it, so, and which is called their house cut. Uh, and they don't deviate much from whatever that house cut is. The third thing in terms of limitations, in my view, is that they're not always good at the big picture. When I say big picture, I mean the entire silhouette. If you take a look at me, you can see the jacket I'm wearing or the coat I'm wearing and the trouser. I preach about this all the time, about how one needs to sort of look at the entire silhouette and not just focus on the jacket or the trousers. They are not two different or two individual pieces. It is called a suit for a reason because they should, they should be balanced, there should be harmony between the top and the bottom, the jacket and the trousers. And what I've found in my experience is that a lot of tailors are not very good at sort of establishing this harmony between the cut of the jacket and the trousers. I'll give you an example. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen jackets that are cut, properly cut jackets, cut full, very nice jackets, and then the suit is essentially rubbished by a pair of trousers that are not suited uh, to the particular jacket. Perhaps the trousers might be too slim, too narrow, too short, and so on and so forth. And that's what I talk about, the big picture. A tailor needs to be able to see the entire picture, to see the entire silhouette, and ensure that both the top or the jacket and the trousers are in balance. Which brings me to the next thing, fit, comfort, and style. Again, it goes sort of to the prior point, which, mean, which, which essentially suggests that you're, you're stuck with a particular style. And so, for instance, I've seen a lot of fairly well-built men, heavily built men, go to Italy and say, make me an Italian suit. An Italian suit doesn't work for many heavily built men, at least the traditional Italian continental look, which is sort of a close cut coat or close cut suit. It just doesn't. And so if you're 250 pounds and you're six foot three or six foot two or six foot four, and you want to look like a runway model from Milan, it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. They're gonna make you a suit. They're gonna make you an Italian suit, but it's not gonna look right. And so you're not gonna be comfortable in that garment. That style is not gonna be suited for you. And the fit is gonna be almost invariably off. However, like I said, this is what they make. If you go to Naples or you go to Milan or you go to Rome uh, or what have you, or even to Paris, if you go to Cifonelli or any of the you know, Parisian houses, they have a specific style. They have a specific house cut. And so if you're not, if, you're, if your build doesn't lend itself to that particular house style, you're gonna have a problem. And so you're gonna have a problem with the fit, you're gonna have a problem with the comfort, you're gonna have a problem with the style. Again, fit should be perfect if the tailor is any good. But, 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 this is assuming that the particular house cut or sort of the, let's say, regional cut is suited to your body. Now, this is where I often like to sort of make a, let's say, a plug for the drape cut. And look at what I'm wearing. Anyone could wear this. You could be slim, you could be frail, you could be fully built. The good thing about the drape cut or the English drape cut, in my view, is that it accommodates a multitude, a variety of, let's say, body types. 
whereas the European cut certainly doesn't. And then the sack suit, obviously, is an acquired taste. The American sack suit, sack suit is an acquired taste. Uh, you could be slim and tall and frail, frail, and that could be your thing. It might look baggy or saggy, but it, it's your thing. I mean, that's your prerogative. But as far as I'm concerned, a lot of men favor the European continental look because it's what they see on the runway or on Instagram or on cover magazines and they want to look like that. But not everyone is built for that cut and you should be keenly aware of that. The fourth limitation, of course, of bespoke tailors is location. Well, uh, like they say, bespoke historically has been a contact spot, uh, contact spot. And so you would actually have to go to the tailor uh, to get measured and to get fitted and so on and so forth. And so if you're not, let's say, if you're not uh, a proximity to a, a tailor or uh, sort of a tailoring region is an issue, then you're going to have a problem uh, unless you have the means to fly back and forth. Uh, say, for instance, you're somewhere in the American Midwest and you want a tailored suit and you want a savvy row tailored suit, if you have the means to fly back and forth to London, you know, God bless you, uh, good, good for you. But for most people, uh, that is just not very practical. So location and convenience is a major, major, major constraint uh, for most bespoke tailors. Some do road shows, of course. Uh, there are any number of tailors that do road shows, but the wait times can be quite long, sometimes a year or more. I mean, I've seen, you know, wait times as long as three years. But frankly, I have no idea. It completely beats me how anyone could wait for a garment for three years. Uh, but there you have it. So that's, um, that's about it as far as sort of the key things or things to bear in mind while shopping for a bespoke tailor. And with that, I bring this presentation to a conclusion, trying to keep it short and crisp. And we will talk about what this bespoke tailor is wearing today. Um, and a not so subtle plug. I'm wearing an Askoki office suit, and it's done in a double breasted cut. As you can see, nicely draped. It's cut full in the chest. You can see the shape. If you're looking at the camera, you can see the shape. It is not a sack suit. It is not baggy, it is not square, it is a beautiful shaped suit. Uh, we use darts, of course, to shape it. And so this would fall under the third category in my introductory segment, the English drape suit. So what we do is a typical English drape suit, which is exactly what I have on. So I have on an Askoki uh, gray, it's sort of it's a medium gray, worsted, beautiful worsted twill suit. Uh, this fabric, I believe, I acquired some time ago. Uh, it might have been from London Lounge or somewhere, uh, or from uh, Fox Brothers. I, I frankly don't remember. But it's, so it's just a beautiful um, workhorse twill uh, that one can wear to the office day in, day out, and you would get years, years, if not decades, of service out, uh, 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 from. Uh, I'm wearing it with, with a white Askoki shirt. Again, this is sort of one of our cotton shirts in done in voile, cotton voile. All our cottons come from Calo River, of course, which is one of the top shirting mills in Italy. And um, I'm wearing it with uh, just a plain, uh, beautiful silk tie by uh, Chave, I believe. This is, again, uh, an old one that I had to dig up from uh, the bottom of the box. And I'm wearing them with dark uh, black shoes, to be specific, black cap toe shoes. So, just a very, very uh, classic uh, look, very monochromatic, uh, just the way we like it. We're, we're, we're shooting at night, or we often shoot at night. So I, I like to keep it uh, uh, today. I chose to keep it very, very monochromatic. With that, I bring this presentation to an end. And do not forget to please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and comment on our videos. Follow us on Instagram at askokeyig, that's A-S-K-O-K-E-Y-I-G. Join our Discord community as well. And uh, generally speaking, um, visit our website, of course. Our website is our headquarters, uh, www.askokey.com. Go to shop, you will see a variety of products, our shirts, our jackets, our trousers, and so on and so forth. You will be spoiled for choice with 
many more products uh, coming uh, on the way in the next uh, weeks and months. So I say thank you and uh, look forward to seeing you next time on Ask Oki. Goodbye. Thank you.